Hello everybody, welcome to this short video that aims to introduce to you what the half court press is. This is a rule that's applied in under sevens and under eights in the Hong Kong Junior Football League. And then also, once you understand what the half court press is, how can we beat the press when it comes when the players try to win the ball from us? Firstly, let's look at what is the press and pressing. It's something used in football and it's when pressure is applied on a player or the team that's in possession of the ball. So it's a defending strategy. It's a skill that can be used in all areas of the pitch and it's used to try and either win the ball back, dictate or force the play in a certain direction uh, or to delay the opposition from attacking our goal. Pressing is something that happens at all levels too. So you'll see it as a tactic when you're watching a professional team on the television. It's used in amateur football and also we want the children to understand how it's used in youth football. What is the half-court press? It is when a goalkeeper has possession of the ball, either at a goal kick or they might have it in their hands, having made a save, and then this means the opposition must move back to the halfway line. Why is this in place? Well, it stops the team from getting penned into their own half and their own penalty area. By having the opposition drop back, it creates some space for the goalkeeper to pass the ball to a teammate. This then gives the team in possession a chance to play out from the back or dribble out from the back, and a chance to get up the field. It makes the game a little bit more interesting players are developing their understanding and their technical ability. Children at under sevens and under eights typically play five a side football. Obviously going to have a goalkeeper and then four outfield players. Generally, there's two main formations that we would play, either a 1-2-1 one, one, or a 2-2. Two, two. And then to simplify that, try and help the children understand and visualize those formations on the pitch, we tend to say diamond, and then sometimes we say square or box for the 2-2. Two, two. So you might hear that from the sidelines from the coach. Can we get into the diamond? Can we get into our box formation? And then we're looking for the children to get into those positions on the field. Okay, the next portion of the video is going to look at a number of scenarios. And there are untold amounts of different scenarios that can come up in football. That's why it's such a great sport. First one we're going to look at is what happens when the goalkeeper's got the ball. Now, they've got lots of options for who they could pass to, where they could put the ball. Do you think it's a good idea that they try to kick the ball long? Go for a, a long kick, a high kick, a punt to get the ball into the other half. Why might this not be a good idea? Okay, well, let's have a look at this now on the animation. If the keeper kicks it long, you'll notice that they've missed out all of the APSS yellow players. The ball's more likely to drop from a red player, and then the reds can get the ball and start attacking the APSS goal again. So this isn't what we want. We've got possession of the ball. We want to do our best to try and keep the ball. So a question for you now is, is it better to set up in a diamond or a box when we're trying to play out from our goalkeeper? This is a video clip we're watching now, and the boys do okay, actually. They get the ball out, but this is mainly because the press doesn't come very quickly. If we have a look at the same situation and the animation, if the press comes quickly, actually, if the player in front of the goalkeeper gets the ball and is too slow to turn, then they're probably going to come under pressure quickly, lose the ball, and then the opposition can score because they're right in front of our goal. So setting up in a box when we're playing out from the goalkeeper is much easier. This allows the first person receiving the ball to open up on their back foot and face forward. In the first clip, almost get out. In the second clip, the team do get out, the ball switched across the field, and then they can dribble into the opposition half. Here we've also got something called the passing checklist. So it shows here the options that this first player has. Ideally, can they pass the ball forward into a good position up the pitch? But even not, if they receive it well, they can go back to the goalkeeper and then we can pass out the other side. So there really are a lot of options once that first player receives the ball. The last thing we'll consider in this video is what if the press doesn't come? Or what if more space opens up? We looked at a lot of passes in the last clip, but if space opens up, can the player on the ball dribble out? Can they drive forwards? Be assertive and take the ball out of their heart. The little animation here, we've got a nice example of that, where the player carries the ball out, then releases it to their striker who can score. So now you're ready to beat the press. Make sure you're getting down to the pitch, getting as much game experience as you can. And always remember, let the game be the teacher.